So is this proof flawed? I don't know. But is it circular? I don't think so. So in a recent video, I gave a very simple proof of the Pythagorean theorem based on the dot product. And in the comments, a lot of people felt that my proof was circular, which it's not. And in this video, I'll convince you that it's not. But first I want to say that I wasn't at all surprised by that reaction because initially I myself thought that the proof is so simple, it had to be circular. Also, I could tell from the comments that people who thought that it was circular and were convinced that it's circular were simply using definitions different from mine. We disagreed on what a vector is, what length means, what angle means, what the dot product means, and so on. So I believe that as soon as we agree on what the definitions are and agree on the path that we take from the definitions to the proof, we will agree that the proof is not circular. Now I'm not saying that it's not flawed, it may still be flawed, because all proofs are flawed, but I don't think it's circular. So to see that, let's imagine that we're talking to Euclid, and of course he knows all aspects of Euclidean geometry much better than any of us ever will. So he has a concept of what a segment is, of what an angle is, and so on. And what we'll ask him to do is to think of segments as having direction, in other words, as being vectors, and I think he'll say, fine, what are you going to do with it? And we'll say, well, we can add them together by the tip to tail rule. We can multiply them by numbers, positive as well as negative numbers. Now, I don't believe that Euclid uh, worked with negative numbers, but let's suspend our disbelief for now and imagine that he did. I think if we master negative numbers by third grade, I think he could do that also. Okay, so we can add them by the tip to tail rule and multiply them by numbers. And so these are algebraic operations. And then we'll list the properties that these two operations satisfy. We'll say that it's addition is commutative, addition is associative, addition is distributive in every which way that's possible. We'll introduce them to the concept of the zero vector, and I think he'll accept that, and so on. And so he'll have the basics of linear algebra along with us, and this is the foundation of affine geometry. And then we'll introduce the concept of the dot product. Now, notice that one thing we're absolutely not mentioning is bases, components, and coordinates. So our definitions of length and angles and the dot product will not depend on components, and will certainly not be the sum of the pairwise products of components, which I know a lot of people think of when they hear dot product or in a product, so it's not that. We'll define it in the very way we did it in this class, which is the dot product of two vectors is the product of the length of one of them, a number, the length of the other vector, also a number, times the cosine of the angle between them. Now, as far as cosine, uh, we can think about whether Euclid possessed this notion or whether it was uh, invented a couple hundred years later. But sines and cosines are just proportions. And so that's another subject that we could introduce Euclid to, and he would accept it rather easily. Uh, the sine and cosine identities, uh, there are some identities in trigonometry that certainly rely on the Pythagorean theorem. For example, the identity, one of the most fundamental ones, that cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of the same angle equals 1. This is certainly a consequence of uh, Pythagoras' theorem. So we will stay away from these concepts. Uh, we will only use sines and cosines for solving right triangles, which means having one side and an angle, find another side. And uh, those applications of trigonometry do not include this identity and do not rely on Pythagoras' theorem. We will then, just like we did for vectors and their addition and multiplication by numbers, uh, list all of the properties of the dot product, of which there are specifically three. Uh, one is commutativity, I'm not gonna write it down, all of that has been done before. 
I'm just outlining the steps from the very beginning to the very end so we can see whether any of our arguments are circular. So, so far, we're just laying out the definitions. So we will prove that the dot product is commutative. We will then prove that it's distributive, and distributivity involves two properties, one of which is rather obvious, and the other one is actually the part where all of the intelligence that later contributes to the Pythagorean theorem is actually absorbed. So distributivity, let me write the word. So like I said, this has two parts. One is that if you multiply one of the two vectors by a number, the resulting dot product gets multiplied by the same number. That's pretty self-evident from the definition because just one of the lengths will be multiplied by that number. And so the entire product gets multiplied by that number. That's simple. The other one is not at all obvious or straightforward or anything like that. That one I will write down. Okay. This one is not at all obvious and requires proof. And in proving this property, we should be particularly careful that we don't use Pythagoras' theorem. Right now, I will take my time in drawing the four vectors that figure in this expression. U, V, W, and V plus W. Let's see what they look like. So keep in mind that for the purposes of the Pythagorean theorem, we just need to prove this property in the plane. So all of the vectors on the board, u, v, w, and of course v plus w, all line in the same plane of this board. So it's a planar argument. And let's remember the geometric interpretation of the dot product, which I described as not as simple and not as elegant as we would like, but it's still relatively simple and elegant enough for our purposes. So let's look at u dotted with v. u dotted with v, if you recall, is the length of the projection of v onto u times the length of u. And if you will notice, each one of the dot products here has the length of u in it. So we can just ignore it because every dot product has a that factor. So we'll mention it, but that's not the important part. So u dotted with v is the length of the projection of v onto u times the length of u. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that this length we need to pay attention to, and even though in the dot product it is also multiplied by the length of u, that will be the case for all the dot products. Okay, now let's look at u dotted with w. Well, that's the length of the projection of w onto u times the length of u. Let's draw that. This thing's like here. So the length of the projection of w onto u is just a little bit shorter than the projection of v onto u. And now let's look at the projection, or rather the length of the projection of v plus w onto u. Well, it's this construction. Okay, and so it's this length right here. And so in order to prove this identity, we just need to prove that the length of this projection, the projection of u, plus the, projection, the length of the projection of w equals the length of the projection of v plus w. And the argument would be a little bit different depending on how these vectors are arranged and some of the numbers might be negative, which would be a little bit of a problem for Euclid if, the, if some of the angles are over 90 degrees. And we can account for all of that if we need to, of course. Basically, all we need to show, and it's almost self-evident from this drawing, is that this length right here equals this length right here, right? Because that's what's missing uh, here from being this total length. And that's pretty self-evident because this 
side right here, which represents the vector w, is by construction, by the very definition of v, what v plus w means, is parallel and equals in length to this vector, which is just the vector w shifted to the tip of v. So the length of its projection can be found right here. Again, why not use red? So it'll be right here, right? And of course, this triangle, I'll outline it in green. And this triangle are entirely similar because this side is parallel and equals to this side. This side is parallel to this side. I don't know what else to say. I think there are some details to be filled, but clearly this angle is the same as this angle. Everything's parallel. All the lengths are just right. Uh, so this segment, the length of this segment equals the length of this segment. So this projection plus this projection equals this projection plus, the plus this length. And so they combine to give this length. Okay, so that really completes the proof of distributivity. So now we have distributivity. And then the final property that is very important for the axiomatic approach to the inner product, positive definiteness, is not even relevant to this proof. So we have now established all of the properties of vectors, all of the algebraic properties of vectors, and all of the algebraic properties of the inner product without using Pythagoras' theorem. And if you now watch the video that created this controversy, you will notice that all I use for the proof of Pythagoras' theorem, as a matter of fact, why don't I give it to you right now? Because it's so simple. Okay, so in a right triangle, represent one of the legs by a vector A, the other leg by a vector B, then the hypotenuse is represented by the vector C, which is A minus B. If this vector equals this one, then the dot product of this vector with itself will equal the dot product of this vector with itself, which is completely obvious that that's the corollary. Okay, by an application of the distributive property, as a matter of fact, by an application of the distributive property three times, once to distribute on this minus sign, and then in each of the remaining terms, you will have to use the distributive law to distribute on this minus sign, we'll get A dotted with A plus B dotted with B. And then, I'm going to skip this detail now, A dotted with B by the very definition of the dot product as the length of one times the length of the other times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 90 degrees and therefore zero. The cosine is, uh, we're left with A dotted with A. And once again, appealing to the geometric definition of the dot product, where the dot product is the length of one vector times the length of the other vector times the cosine of the angle between them, right? We started with geometric quantities, we gave the definition, and now we conclude from all of that that the dot product of a vector with itself is its length squared equals the length of a squared plus the length of b squared. And there we go. There you have Pythagoras' theorem. So is this proof flawed? I don't know. But is it circular? I don't think so.